Lesson 4.7, Divide Using Repeated Subtraction. We can use repeated subtraction and multiples to find quotients. We subtract the divisor, so remember this is the dividend, that's the divisor, that's the quotient. We subtract the divisor from the dividend as many times as possible until we get to zero. The 2 was subtracted 3 times, so 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. And we can use sub repeated subtraction to divide numbers with greater value. So we can repeatedly subtract greater multiples. We can also show repeated subtraction on a number line by making equal jumps backward from the amount of the dividend. So from this amount, we make equal jumps backward, and we know the size of the jump is going to be the divisor. We start at 6, we jump a 2, and we keep jumping 2 until we get to 0. We count how many jumps we made as the quotient. We made 3 jumps. 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. When we do our repeated subtraction, or our division, we want to make sure we keep our place values straight. We can use grid paper, and we can put one digit into each square. That'll keep it nice and straight. We can also turn our paper sideways, can't we? We've learned that. And then that way, we've got straight lines to help us keep our place values straight. Dave is planting tulip bulbs in his garden. He has 32 bulbs. He will plant eight bulbs in each row. How many rows will he plant? We start with the dividend, and we repeatedly subtract the divisor, this eight, until we reach zero. 32 minus eight is 24. 24 minus eight is 16. 16 minus eight is eight, and eight minus eight is zero. We count the number of times we subtracted to get the quotient. That's one rows, two rows, three rows, four rows. So he'll make four rows. If we subtract multiples of the divisor, we can subtract greater amounts and get to the quotient faster. So think of breaking apart the divisor into two add-ends like we did in video 4.6. We have 65 divided by 5 we think about breaking this divisor 65 into two add-ends. And we think, well, 5 times 10 is 50, so we can just take away a 50 from the 65. That's 10 times 5. We have 15 left when we do our subtraction. And we think, well, 5 times 3 is 15, so we can take another we can take the 15 away and we'll be at 0. Then we won't have to do all the subtraction coming down. This was 10, this was 3. We add those quotients together and we get 13. So 65 divided by 5 is equal to 13. If our dividend is not compatible with our divisor, that means it's not a multiple of our divisor. We can't do 5 times something and it'll equal 68. So it's not compatible then we'll have a remainder. We learned about remainders back in video 4.2, and that's linked in the description. We want to see how many times 5 will fit into 68. We have 68 divided by 5. And we can think right away, well, 10 times 5 is 50, so we can subtract a 50 right away and put a 10 on the side. We'll have 18 left, and we think, how many 5s can fit into an 18? three of them, because three times five is 15. So we subtract the 15, and we still have three left over. That's our remainder. We can't fit a five into that, so that's our remainder. So we had a 10 and a three. So how many times will five fit into 68? 13 times, with three left over. It's 13 remainder three. And this happened, this remainder happened because our dividend and divisor were not compatible with each other.
We can show dividing by repeated subtraction on a number line and what happens if we can't make equal jumps to zero. So we're going to use a small division problem as our example. We have 15 divided by 2. We start at 15, the dividend, and the size of our jumps are going to be 2. So we go 1, 2, that's one jump. We go back to 13. We jump another 2, now we're back at 11. We do it again, now we're back at 9. We do it again, we're back at 7, then 5, then 3, then we land on a 1. We can't jump 2 anymore, so we stop at 1. So how many jumps of 2 did we make? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We were able to make 7 equal jumps, but we could not reach 0 with another jump of 2. There was only a little 1 jump left. So our quotient is 7 with 1 left over. We have 7 remainder 1. Here we have 20 divided by 6. So we're going to start at the 20 and our jump size are going to be 6. So we're going to jump 6 to 14. Then we're going to jump another 6 back to 8. Another 6. Now we're at a 2. We made 3 jumps, but we can't jump 6 anymore. There's only 2 here. So the quotient is a 3 with 2 left over. We have 3 remainder 2. We were able to make 3 equal jumps of 6, but landed on the 2. And we couldn't make any more jumps of 6, so our remainder is 2. 1, 2. And we can do 20 divided by 6 using repeated subtraction with counters. And we start with 20 counters. We have 5, 10, 15, 20. And we keep removing groups of 6. So here we have one group of 6 that we've taken. Let's take another group of 6. That's two groups of 6. Let's take another group of 6. Now we have three groups of 6. And we have two left over. Our quotient is 3, remainder 2. We count how many groups of 6 we removed and that will be our quotient, and the leftover counters will be our remainder. Mrs. Kim has $31 to spend at the school bake sale. She buys eight cupcakes for $2 each. She would like to spend the rest of her money on loaves of cinnamon raisin bread that cost $6 each. How many loaves of cinnamon raisin bread can she afford to buy? So the first thing we do is find the product of eight cupcakes for $2 each. Eight times $2. And eight times $2 is $16. We subtract the $16 from her $31 to find out how much she has left over. And $31 minus $16 is equal to $15. Now remember the cinnamon raisin bread costs $6 each, and we're trying to find how many loaves she can buy with this money. So we find $15 divided by $6. We can do repeated subtraction. $15 minus 6 is equal to $9. $9 minus 6 is equal to $3. We can see she can buy two loaves of cinnamon raisin bread and she's going to have $3 left over. Chris wants to put solar garden lights every four feet along the front edge of his garden. If the length of his garden edge is 54 feet, how many lights should he buy? We need to find 54 divided by 4. It's 54 feet long, and he wants the lights every four feet. We can use repeated subtraction with multiples. We start with 54, our dividend, and think, well, we don't want to do a lot of subtracting 4, so we can just take away 10 times 4. That's 40. Now we have 14 left. And we think, how many 4s are in 14? Well, 3 times 4 is 12, so we can take a 12 away right away. 
that leaves two. We've got a 10 and a three. So there were 10 fours in this 40 and three fours in this 12. That's 13. We have two feet of garden edge left over. Now, he can't buy half of a light or a third of a light or a fourth of a light. Can't buy a fraction of a light. So we use the quotient 13. Sometimes in word problems, we'll just use the quotient and we won't use the remainder. We learned about that in video 4.3 when we learned about interpreting the remainders. And that's linked in the description. Which model matches the expression 18 divided by 2? So we have two number line models. We need to find which one matches 18 divided by 2. We ask ourselves and we think which model shows repeated subtraction of the divisor. So 18 is the dividend, 2 is the divisor. That means the size of our jumps are going to be 2. It'll start on the 18 and each jump will be 2. We look here, it starts on the 18, but it jumps 1, 2, 3. 18 to 15 is 3, not 2. We look here, 18 to 16, that's a jump of 2. It started at the dividend and it jumped 2. So, if you think this is the right model, you're right. Whether we're using a number line or repeated subtraction, we start with the dividend. Our next lesson, 4.8, we're going to divide using partial quotients. I'm really proud of you for watching math videos to get better in math. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.